As you all know, the global burden of tobacco is enormous. 100 million people killed in the 20th century. In the 21st century, unless urgent action is taken, it will kill 1 billion people. Uh, there will be 8 million deaths per year by 2030. It is the leading preventable cause of death, killing up to half of people who use it. And the world's leading cause of death is now a man-made product. Tobacco kills 15,000 people every day, one person every six seconds, 600,000 people killed by secondhand smoke. Half of tobacco-related deaths occur during the most productive years of life. Uh, tobacco, including both healthcare costs and lost productivity, costs nearly 1% of the total world output of GDP. And tobacco kills more people worldwide than AIDS, TB, and malaria combined. And in fact, if you look at the other leading causes of death, um, acute respiratory infections and tuberculosis, a substantial proportion of those deaths are in fact from uh, tobacco. Nearly two-thirds of the world's smokers live in 15 low- and middle-income countries, 40% living in China and India, 62% in the top 10 countries, which you can see there, which are mostly low- and middle-income, and then 75% in the top 20 countries, of which 13 are low- and middle-income. So there is an ability to focus and make a big difference, but there is also an ability for any country to make substantial improvements, and we'll see that in a minute. Tobacco will kill an increasing number of people in developing countries, even as deaths decline slightly in high-income countries. And co tobacco control interventions are proven to work, yet few countries use them. Effective tobacco control is within reach. The FCTC has been signed by nearly all countries in the world and ratified by nearly all as well, the U.S. a notable exception. Uh, the high-level summit, as you all know, provides a unique opportunity. Uh, the first in 10 years, the goal is to prioritize prevention and control, to focus on developmental and other challenges and social and economic impacts, to secure support of government and heads of states for things that they can meaningfully commit to and then be held accountable for. I will say that there is a, a, a concern, and I've put it a little controversially, uh, about avoiding a clinical trap. Uh, now, clinical care is very important, and for things like blood pressure control, uh, can make an enormous difference and should be done. But clinical measures are never going to have the population impact that measures can have uh, that are policy and affect all people. So take the example of tobacco control. <coughs> clinical cessation services are very important, and every doctor should be an advocate for tobacco control. Every smoker should be advised to quit. Every smoker who wants to quit should be prescribed medications which will double or triple their chance of succeeding. That is all true. But even if you do that very, very well, you will not have anything like the kind of impact that you'll have by smoke-free environments, hard-hitting anti-tobacco ads, tobacco taxation, or banning advertising, marketing, and promotion. The role of global tobacco control is very important for NCD control. If we can't do con tobacco control, we're not going to be able to have success in anything in NCD control. It's the most preventable of all of the NCD risk factors. There are already considerable policy gains and commitments, and the approaches that are used can easily be applied to control of other non-communicable diseases and their risk factors, building on the investments already made. I think one of the clearly exciting things about working on global tobacco control and the opportunity that, that's really been presented is very much the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, mm -hmm. which really does give us a global you know, blueprint for how to move tobacco control forward. So that's a really exciting you know, um, aspect to have as a way of beginning to push policy reform at the country level. There are now 172 countries that have ratified the Framework Convention. At the national level, what we find having that blueprint in place really does provide us with the opportunity to really engage countries because they have already made the political commitment to address tobacco control. So I think that under, underlies um, real efforts to move tobacco control at the country level. We have a very solid database and evidence base uh, that we could uh, evaluate uh, what works and I think the empower strategies and the articles uh, outlined in the framework convention 
uh, can really uh, be driven by the data from the countries. This opportunity for, let's say, relaunch the, the FCTC, mm -hmm. but making more, uh, uh, more emphasis now at that it's not enough have been ratified the, the had ratified the convention that we need to implement. The convention without national laws means nothing in the country, so mm -hmm. we need to improve that. What has happened is, over the years, the acceptability level of, on tobacco control has gone up in the ministries of health. It's still not reached uh, a stage where we have acceptance of all stakeholders. So uh, that's, the, that's the progress which we have made in the last few years. Uh, I would say in most of the countries. And the summit, uh, the way I see it, allows us to create that multi-sectoral, higher level engagement, both within the governments and between the governments, on, on moving to the next big step for tobacco control.